The uh, stack fight card, you know, back in front of the fans, big arena. But did you still get hyped at this point in your career about you know, spots like this, or is it just another day at the office? Have you guys ever stepped at the edge of a cliff? Anybody here? Yes. Same thing. You can't, it doesn't matter how many times you do it. Once you get to the edge of that cliff, your adrenaline shoots up and it's time to jump. So yeah, I mean, that's, why we, that's part of why I do this. That's awesome. Uh, comes a week after a fellow former WC UFC champ, uh, Jose Aldo, turned in just a, a fantastic performance. I'm just curious if you, if you watch that, maybe draw a little inspiration. I mean, you guys have kind of had parallel careers a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Aldo has always been somebody that we've been fighting alongside each other since day one. I remember he was on my same fight card uh, when I fought Charlie Valencia back in WEC something. I don't even remember what number that was, but he's, he's just a champion still, you know? He's a, he always will be. And I didn't watch the fight because I'll watch it, but right now it's, uh, it's time to just stay focused. The key for me is keep the heart rate down right now. Keep the heart rate down, stay, stay focused, and then when it's time for the heart rate to go up, then I'll use it. Very nice. Uh, obviously, you fought all the best in the world. Uh, Pedro, where does, where does he stack up? I mean, how do, you, how do you look at him as an opponent? Pedro's obviously one of the best in the world to me. Um, he's been in this game as long as me and Jose Aldo. So, Jose Aldo, excuse me. And um, nothing but respect. I mean, the guy carries himself like a professional. And... He's just, I mean, I've seen him knock people out. He's a knockout artist is how I view him. A knockout artist, and he's a, he's a grappling finisher. So to me, he looks, he's a finisher. That, that's what he's, he's always going for the finish one way or another. Yeah. And last thing for me, I mean, you went here. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of talk about how the title picture plays out. And sometimes your name gets mentioned and sometimes it doesn't. So what do you think? I mean, is it win here? Do, you, do people need to be talking about you as a, as a title contender again? You know, I think that any time I'm competing, you should be talking about me as a title contender. I'm, I'm here to compete to be the best. I'm not here to, you know, just play around. I'm here to keep going up. And that's why I'm, I'm looking to climb the ladder, not anything else. Just move up in a forward direction. That's it, right up the mountain to the top. Um, right here. Uh, I know after your uh, fight against Cejudo, you had said kind of the warm-ups backstage and then being shuttled to the arena kind of threw you off a bit. And then the next fight was in the empty apex here. Now does this fight week start? Does it feel more normal to you now that the fans are in attendance and everything? I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen a fan yet. Honestly, adjusting to the different fights, going from the, the fight that you mentioned, the championship fight that I lost, to the uh, Casey Kenny fight that I had here at the Apex, which was totally, I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to say weird, but it is weird because the cage was smaller and it is silent, but then I kind of got used to the silence. Now your, your brain has to adjust to each thing. Uh, so after the Cejudo fight, I fought Kenny and I was like, okay, you got to do things a little bit different in the back because the adrenaline doesn't rise as much on the walk. It's just a little different. Now, Again, like I said a second ago, it's about keeping the heart rate down until the walk because you, your heart rate shoots up on the walk with the fans and the screaming and the FUs and the your greats and the, all of the mixture. It's pretty crazy. So um, definitely I'm looking forward to being with the fans. I, I asked to be on this card because I, uh, I'm, I'm fans of both of the champions, Dustin Poirier and Oliveira, Oliveira. and the card is stacked. And so I just wanted to be a part of this. And speaking of the cards, I think fans are surprised that you're on the prelims and then like Cody and O'Malley are on the main card. Did it matter to you where you fell on the card or does it bother you at all that those two are above you in the pecking order of this fight? You know, I, I've never compared myself to other people. It's important that you don't do so. You know, that would be a judgment realistically on myself and everybody else. And if I start, you know, you start comparing, you start messing with yourself. Realistically, I get paid the same regardless of where I'm on the card. And so I'm getting good money to do uh, less promotion and less headaches and I get done earlier. And so I think I'm winning. And realistically, I'm getting more views. I'm going to get the undercard promotion plus the main card promotion. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that. It's important for me to explain that to the fans in the world that this is a very good slot that I'm in. It's to me, this slot and the slot after are the best slots on the fight card. But egotistically, you want to say, I'm ahead of you. That's all ego. I mean, it really does not matter to me. 
I swear it doesn't. And uh, it's important that my fans know that and that the world knows that where you're at on the fight card doesn't change your pay. So we're getting taken care of. Dominic, back here. Dominic in the middle. Uh, I want to congratulate you on uh, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, right? You just got inducted into that. What was that experience like for you? Thank you for that, first of all. Um, it was really cool. I wouldn't say that, you know, people go, well, geez, man, he wasn't like an Olympian or the best wrestler in the world, so what would he get that for? Well, you know, the, it was for, they called it the Outstanding American category, and that was for using wrestling as a platform to create success for not just myself and for my people, but also for wrestling. I'm a huge advocate for wrestling of what it brings to the table that, you know, more than any other sport, you have to sacrifice food, water, and your body. Uh, and that's a different thing. That makes it officially not a game. When you play basketball, when you play football, you get, you're hydrated the whole time, you're fed the whole time, and you're playing a game. When you're wrestling and you're in high school and you're not having Christmas or Thanksgiving and you're sacrificing, the, sacrifice isn't the word because that's, you're, you're, you're choosing to be in that space and give those things up. That takes a different mentality and a different clear intention. And when you learn that in junior high, high school, you're not just playing a sport, you're learning life. That's what life is. Life is not having everything. Not, everything's not gonna be comfortable. You don't always get to get your, your bills paid for you like things are happening these days. Like in, in the early days in America, you, know, you work your way from the bottom to the top. And um, wrestling teaches that. There's no shortcuts. And so I'm an advocate for that and for the community of Arizona. You know, I've given a lot to the community out there, and they chose me for those reasons, not just my wrestling ability. So where would you say that that induction ranks among all the great achievements that you've accomplished? I, I've learned to, you know, I know what I am without sending arrogant. I know that I'm a world champion. I know that I'm a, I have the mentality. I know what I am. So when I show up to something like that, what's beautiful about it is I get to give. When I was there with my uncle, my, my aunt, my, my cousin, um, friends that have been with me in this, in this journey the whole time, my mom, my stepfather, my coaches from high school, my high school wrestling coaches who were taking me through freestyle wrestling tournaments while taking me through summer school. I'm doing tests in the stands in between matches. Things like that resonate. Those people deserve to have the recognition. And to be at that Hall of Fame and be able to receive that award, they received that award. And it was a reminder of why I'm here, why I do this. It's not just for me, I'm in a bigger thing. It's at a certain point when you've been in this game as long as I have, you need something bigger than yourself. For my, that's my perspective. And for me, it's, it really is about what I can give and show people what they are through my wins. And um, when, I, when I was there and I earned that, that's what it felt like. It was nice to see the smile on my coaches' faces and everybody else and for them to see that their hard work, their sacrifices for me, the things that they gave up for me to, to crack through and, and get as fortunate and as, as I've been, it was cool to give that to them. I know, I know I belong there, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, definitely a very cool thing, Dom. One more for me. I just wanted to ask about the Casey Kenny performance. You know, good showing from you. Obviously, got the win. Having got time to look back on it, just curious, you know, what your biggest takeaways were from uh, you know the the performance you had. Well, what. I mean, from an analytical standpoint, he was a tough southpaw. And so that gave me the rounds that I needed against a tough southpaw to prepare for a lot of the division. That was part of the reason I wanted that fight, too. He's very strong. Um, he's durable. He comes hard for the, for the finish and to take your head off. And he's from Tucson. It's a Tucson boy. So I got to represent Arizona's doing big things in this sport. And I don't think people know like how much Arizona has made a dent in the sport of mixed martial arts. Some of the toughest people in the world come from that desert. I'm one of them, and he's one of them. And um, it was good to get out there and, and just get a win. I, I thought it was a unanimous win for sure. That, no, no question in my mind. But you know, uh, it's important that I make sure and do that again. That, that's what matters now. Best of luck and congrats, Tom. Thank you. Dominic, you, you mentioned a second ago about avoiding watching a fight, keep the heart rate down in preparation for, for camp. Are there other things that you, over the years, have learned to avoid to keep that heart rate down with a fight coming up that might surprise some people just in your everyday life? Yeah, probably. Um, I would say I've just really, over the years, learned to kind of be more neutral with confrontation because... It sounds kind of crazy, but when you get triggered by these people talking, you're actually giving them your power. 
So it's kind of about being more neutral and just relaxing and keeping the heart rate down because that's what martial arts is. You know, you watch all the old school martial arts movies. As I get deeper into the sport, it's more and more like the movies where you got the sensei meditating up in the mountains. Like, it's really like that now more than ever because you really do got to kind of keep yourself calm uh, until you need it. When you need it, use it. And it's important. You know, the yin yang sign is about having the dark and the light. I would say early in my career, I stayed a lot on the dark side as I moved farther and, and like really looked into myself through the ups and downs, the injuries, I've been able to really dabble more in the light side and come to a balance of both. And it, it brings a lot of peace and that's when I can keep my heart rate down. Hey Dominic, right here. Um, you've been a guy who obviously you're one of the analysts on the broadcast. I'm wondering what's the experience like for you when you listen to DC and the guys actually commentate your fight, like knowing them personally and knowing, you know, how the sausage is made, so to speak. Well, Anik to me does, uh, I watch Anik do so much homework leading up to a fight. Like it's, people have no idea how much homework he has to do to be prepared for that. Most for me really goes to him. He leads us in the broadcast with how he talks. When it comes to DC, you know, I, I usually mute it. <laughs> I, I like, I love DC, he's my friend, but to me, from my experience, he doesn't do the homework. He, he wants to get in and out, get the job done, make his money. And I think he cares about us, but it's just different. He doesn't do the preparation from my experience. He might now, I'm hoping he watches some film this time on me so that he knows what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold my breath on that. That's for sure. Do you ever get on? Uh, obviously, I know how you feel about DC. Do you ever get on some of the other guys and they come to your fights and text them like, "Bro, that was not what I was trying to do at all in there." Honestly, I'm never perfect. So there's a roster of I don't know what 400, 600 fighters, and not everybody's gonna agree with what I say either. So it's all perspective in there. And DC is uh, he's gifted athlete. And I think Bisping does a lot of homework. I think he watches a lot of film. And I think that there's certain people that watch the film. And, I, and I, I count that because I do the film study. And the reason I do the film study is it's bigger than me. It's not, I'm not in there talking to hear myself talk and to be right. I'm in there to support the athletes and talk about why they're great and what makes them great. And in order to do that, I need to watch film. I need to see what they do against different styles and how they match up and what creates uh, the openings that they create in those fights and why. So um, I, I really don't call or text any of them because they're just doing their job and it's, they're seeing it how they see it. It's their interpretation, doesn't make it fact. And uh, I know they're doing the best they can, honestly. I know I do the best I can and I'm not always perfect. Obviously, the UFC has done a great job with the athletes transitioning to television. I wanted your thoughts, you know, you shout out guys like Anik, and you have some of the other ones, Brendan Fitzgerald calls fights also. Some of them, you know, who haven't been in the cage also calling the action, because I think there's a bit of that, you know, the fraternity, like you haven't been in there, you don't know it the same. Can you speak a little bit to that, the non-fighters and how they're able to really call the action and really just show their knowledge, despite never having been in the cage themselves? Honestly, I'd have, can you name some of those people that you're talking about, please, and be specific? Because the only ones I know are the ones that I work with. I work with Anik, I work with DC, I work with Bisping, I work with Felder, Fitzgerald. Off the top of my head, those are the ones I've worked with the most. So can you give me an example? Yeah, no, I just mean people non -fighters. who non-fighters? Uh, Fitz, Anik, Rogan, well, Anik, technically. Yeah, Rogan is, so Rogan is special because he brings a quality that we need. I don't think people understand how much this sport needs Joe Rogan. He's the most listened to voice in the world right now, and he's a comedian, so he's got a, a, a thing where he can like say things that none of us can say without getting canceled. And so he's got that little, that little thing right there that gives us something to piggyback off of. Not to mention he's got the voice and he's been doing this so long I learned a lot from him. Um, the sport itself, yes, we may know more because we've been in there, but Joe Rogan brings a special quality. I hope he does this next to me forever, to be honest. I really do. I love working with him. I love him as a human being and what he stands for right now, especially this day and age. He's a powerful human being. Anik, same. I want to work with Anik for the rest of this. If he quits, I said, I will slap you if you quit. I need you. Don't you dare. 
Um, me and Bisping, do I really need to touch on that? That's back and forth. He's just fun. He's my friend. I'll never forget, Bisping came to one of my, I, I lost one of my fights and he came to my after party and he partied with me all night. I'll forever have a space in my heart with Bisping, whether people know it or not, I love that guy. And um, DC, again, we go back and forth and we bicker like brothers because he's like my brother to me. I, I just love him too. Um, just need him to watch some film. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks guys.